Hi everybody, today we're going to be making a little gecko, a perfect little project for using up all those scraps of cork and vinyl. And here it is, the little gecko. The little gecko is a pull tab wallet, which works like this, just by pulling the tab. And it's great if you struggle with traditional wallets. Pattern testers had a great time testing this pattern and they created so many different wallets in such a short space of time. Have a look at these. This is a beginner level sewing project, so it doesn't matter if you've never sewn with cork or vinyl before, you're going to find this really easy. I'll pop a link below for the pattern and all the materials that you'll need to make your little gecko. I'll also pop a link below for my group, the Cork Fabric Sewing Corner, which is over on Facebook. And on there, you can chat to people about all your cork creations. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel while you're here as well, because you don't want to miss out on any future patterns. So, Let's get sewing our little geckos. Okay, so starting with pattern pieces, you will notice there are three pattern piece one. This is so as you can choose what shape you want your wallet to be. So if we start off with this one, obviously you'll see it says square corners. These ones have square corners on them. The next one, diagonal corners. And the last one are the curved ones. Now, you don't need to print the pattern pieces. Um, in the pattern instructions, it has the measurements for the main wallet body with square corners. And then, of course, you can just cut off the corners however you like. Um, so all of these print out onto one piece of paper. So you don't need to cut them all out. You can just cut out whichever one you want. Um, and then whichever pattern piece one you choose, you will also need a pattern piece two and a pattern piece three. Okay. So for today, I'm going to be doing the one with the curved corners. So I'm going to take these two and move them out of the way. So for today, I've got two of my pattern piece one. Now you'll see it says one cork or vinyl cut on the fold. Well, I'm using scraps of cork. So rather than cutting mine on the fold, I've actually just cut two of pattern piece one and then when I get to it later on, I'm just going to stitch them together back to back. So if you don't have enough cork or vinyl to be able to cut on the fold, you can just cut two of your pattern piece one. And then I've got one of my pattern piece two and one of my pattern piece three. I'm going to be sewing a label onto my wallet. So I'm going to be using my little gecko label here. But if you don't have a label, you can cut two of pattern piece three and use that as a label. You can cut it in the same fabric, you can cut it in a contrasting fabric, whatever you would like to do. Also, if your cork is quite thin, mine's not too bad, but if you do find that your cork is quite thin or your vinyl is quite thin, you can cut two of pattern piece two and put them back to back. So then that will make that a little bit more sturdy for you. Before you start, I would go around and burn all the edges using a lighter or a kitchen lighter. Mine's vanished off to the kitchen, um, which is normal. And also I would either use some edge coat or some fabric glue and just, I've got a little rolly tool here. I'll link that down in the comments as to what it is. Um, but I would just use your fabric glue or your edge coat and just do all of the edges um, of your cork if you're using it before you start. So burn the edges first to get rid of any fluffy bits off of your cork and then go around with your fabric glue or your edge coat and treat the edges. So this is how, if you've cut it on the fold, this is what it will look like. Okay, so we've got a left side and a right side. On both of those, we're going to find the midpoint. So we're going to bring back our pattern piece to find the midpoint along the top edge. And you'll see on the pattern piece, the midpoint is marked. So we're just going to take our marking tool and just mark our midpoint on both sides. Okay. 
If you haven't printed the pattern piece, the easiest way to find your midpoint obviously is to fold in half, make a mark. If you have cut on the fold, what I would suggest you do first of all is find the midpoint of your whole piece and then fold back this side, make a mark, fold back the other side at the top, make a mark and that way you'll find your two midpoints of each half. So I'm working on the right, I'm going to measure down from that midpoint the distance marked in the pattern and then I'm going to draw a horizontal line across so as it's centred across on the right and then I'm going to do the same thing over on the left. I'm going to measure down the distance in the pattern and then draw a centred horizontal line across. Okay, so you can see I've got two horizontal lines so both sides are identical. On the right side here, we're going to cut a slit. So we're going to use our craft knife and we're going to cut a slit through the length of the line that we've marked. And then we're going to take a small hole punch and just mark two small holes at either end. That is optional. If you don't have a hole punch, you don't have to do it. Okay, so now I have my slit here and my two little holes punched. Now, as you can see, my cork is super fluffy. So I'm going to take a lighter and I'm just going to burn the edges of the cork there just to seal them off. Okay, so now I'm going to use a little bit of glue just along there just to stop that from fraying as the strap is pulled through. Obviously be careful not to get too much on there. You can see I slipped with the glue. Just wipe that off. Check it hasn't come through to this side. Clean that off a little. Make sure that doesn't get stuck together. Okay, so we're going to top stitch around all four sides of our pattern piece too. And we're also going to top stitch across the top edge of our pattern piece one. If you have chosen to cut two pattern piece two, you can stitch them together at this stage. So we'll be stitching the top edge and around all four sides of pattern piece two using a three millimeter stitch length, which will be three millimeters or an eighth of an inch from the edge. So turning back over, our two pieces. So we have our slit here and our marked line here. So we're going to take our pattern piece two and we're going to line up our pattern piece two with the marked line on the left. Now you need to decide which way round you want your cork to show when you pull the strap through. So if your cork is facing right side up, then when you open your wallet, or you pull your wallet through, I'll just demonstrate, when you pull your wallet through, your strap will be showing right side up. If you attach your strap wrong side up, then when you pull your strap through, it will show wrong side out facing you and right side on the back. So you need to decide which way round you want it to show when you pull your strap out. Now, if you've sewn two pattern piece two together, that's not a problem, it doesn't matter. Um, the only thing to be wary of uh, sewing two together is make sure that your slit is big enough for the thicker piece that you're pulling through. So I have only cut one, so I'm going to sew mine so as it's right side up, so when I pull it out, I can see the pretty side and it doesn't matter if everybody can see the other side. When, of course, your cards are in, the strap doesn't show on the outside at all. 
And now we're going to measure down on both sides of the strap from this top end, a distance which is marked in your pattern piece, in your pattern instructions. Okay, so making sure that your strap is straight, which mine is more or less, even with glue. Um, we can see we've got two marks here. So we're going to take this over to the same chain and we're going to sew a box. I'm going to start at the top corner here, go down to my marked line, right the way across, up the other side and across the top. And then I'm going to sew an X across the centre for stability. If we don't do that, we run the risk of our strap pulling off. Now, if you have a label or you have cut an extra pattern piece three, um, then you don't need to worry too much about your stitching. However, if you are not going to put a label on the other side here, you need to make sure that your box that you sew is really, really pretty because otherwise it will be seen on the front. Okay, so turned over, obviously this is now back to front. Um, as you can see, we can see the box here on the front of our pattern. So now you have a choice. I'm going to sew my gecko logo over the top, but if you don't have a label, as I said before, you can just cut another pattern piece three, put that over the top and make a really nice, pretty decorative stitch around, or you could do it contrasting, whatever you would like to do. If your label is quite a bit bigger than mine, um, you need to be careful that it doesn't come down too far. Obviously, we need to be able to move our strap in and out. If your label um, is quite a bit longer, you'll need to make your strap a little bit longer to be able to accommodate the fact that it can't move as far. So if you've got two pieces like me, this is a little bit easier. However, if you have cut on the fold, it's a little bit of a pickle. Um, we need to twist our strap so as it is right sides together so as then it can fold or twist to go through here if you've got two pieces like me it's not too much of a problem we'll just fold it in half thread it through this way so it's still right side up right the way through, making sure our pattern pieces are wrong sides together. We're going to pull it right the way through, open that out. Okay, so it's looped through both sides, right side together. Okay, if it's on the fold, that's what it should look like. Okay, so we're going to fold that together pull our tab through and we're going to clip these in place and pull that strap out of the way so we know it's not getting caught in the side so I'm going to take this over to the same machine and I'm going to sew down the side across the bottom and back up the other side to meet up with these points I'm going to do a three millimeter stitch length three millimeters or an eighth of an inch in from the side to say to meet up with those points okay so we're just going to bring across our pattern piece three and lay that across the top in half. It is a square, so it doesn't matter which way around it goes. You'll notice it's a little bit wider than the strap. That is intentional, don't be tempted to trim that off. We need that a little bit wider so as when we're pulling our strap back through, it doesn't accidentally end up going back inside. So that is intentional, don't trim it down. Right, so clip that into place. Uh, make sure that it is lined up correctly otherwise when you're stitching you might miss sewing through the back so I'm going to take this over to the same machine and I'm going to sew a box around all four sides using a three millimeter stitch length three millimeters or an eighth of an inch from the edge okay. and there we have it so all stitched around and I've just burnt the thread a little bit with a lighter just to stop it from fraying so now we just need to check that it works so there we have it one little gecko wallet